Um, so um, today I was going to present a paper um, about this tool called Spot Clean, um, a recent paper from like May this year. Um, that's like a software tool designed to basically adjust for this artifact that the author is called spot swapping in spatial transcript omics data. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll just get right into it. Um, no, let me take that slide. Um, so, um, so I guess like the first thing, um, I think most of us are familiar with like the Visium protocol um, or just Visium. Um, but the authors start by introducing what that is. Um, so they have like a nice um, figure illustrating basically like a, a Visium spatial transcript domics experiment has like you have a bunch of spots on a slide um, and each spot has probes that bind to specific mRNAs. Um, so typically you'll place a tissue on this grid of spots. Um, and you'll, um, I think they have in the step C here, they do this thing called permeabilization, um, which releases the mRNAs from the tissue onto the spots. And um, and you sequence them, and then um, since each since each, uh, since, can't talk, um, since each probe has a um, unique uh, like um, molecular identifier, it um, you know exactly where uh, spatially where like genes are expressed, um, and so basically, like what you'd expect from this, one of the assumptions is that you have uh, mRNAs from the tissue only binding to the spot underneath um, because you want to know exactly where the expression um, is spatially. But in reality, they, they in figure C here, they sort of illustrate that they try to use two different colors here. So um, you have like an orange and a blue spot and you have like RNA that's supposed to be associated. So like, the orange RNA are supposed to be associated with the tissue above the orange spot and same, same with blue. But in reality, you get a little bit of um, mixing where you actually have like blue mRNAs binding to the orange spot. So uh, that's sort of what spot swapping is, is where you get like mRNAs that are binding um, from nearby spots in a local area and sort of interfering with the precision, the spatial precision of your um, gene expression measurements. Um, so once they define like what spot swapping is, um, the next step is to say like, actually, this is like a pretty big effect that you can see in real data sets. And it's cool to see one of our LIBD samples here. <laughs> um, nice. Um, and basically, yeah, each of these uh, points in the figure shows something a bit different. So they start with in A, you just have the H and E image for the sample. In B, you can, it's a heat map of UMI, so basically like the number of RNA binding to um, each of these spots. And then they have a sort of showing a white outline where the tissue ends and the background begins. And then this is pretty, um, pretty concerning because you're not supposed to have any counts, ideally in, in background spots at all. You're, since we're only trying to measure the um, expression of the tissue above each spot, but clearly you're seeing like a pretty non-trivial number of um, mRNA outside of the tissue. Um, and also this points to like a local effect, like you're not seeing it everywhere on the entire slide. Um, you're seeing it more concentrated near where near the tissue is. Um, and also, yeah, they have different ways to depict this effect. Um, like in CMD, we have density plots and um, concerningly, again, like this, the gray um, density plot here should, I mean, we shouldn't have any expression ideally, or any counts, I mean, um, in the background. So that's already a concern. And we have some overlap between tissue and background. Um, I think like figures, or the panels E and F are pretty, uh, like the most clear picture here about what they're trying to trying to show. Um, so basically they, they cluster, um, 
cluster of different spots um, based on the gene expression matrix. And they show two of the um, UMAP dimensions after like reducing the dimensionality. Um, and like what we see here is that the background spots actually cluster very similarly to the, the tissue nearby. So it's like not only are we getting non-zero um, UMIs in the background, but also the gene expression looks a lot like it does next to the tissue, like um, where it is. So it's like, again, illustrating that there's a local effect to this. It's not like across the entire slide. It's like uh, we're getting the bleeding of the mRNAs nearby. Um, Um, so yeah, once we've defined what it is and argued that it, it's definitely occurring, um, the next step they do is try to actually measure the extent of it. Um, so they had this one experiment that I think did a pretty good job of showing what they're trying to show. Um, they took a chimeric sample, so like it has both human and mouse, mouse tissue. Um, and in panel A here, they had an expert basically manually annotate where spatially where, uh, which species was where spatially. Um, and since, since these are different species, we know like we can align it to a reference genome and say like these are um, mRNAs that are supposed to belong to human versus mouse. Um, and in panel B, they, I would draw attention to like the uh, green and the uh, dark blue here. So those are like, Proportions of counts that are basically the wrong species. So we have like hum, human UMIs and um, spots that we know are mass tissue and vice versa. So this should really be zero. And we're definitely seeing like, again, pointing to the fact that like there's mRNAs bleeding from nearby tissue. Um, and yeah, similarly, there's a key map showing that pretty much the same thing um, as. Uh, Panel B here, almost, uh, it's pretty similar. And that, yeah, we have this white outline and this definitely counts outside of the white, the white line. Um, so yeah, more evidence that we're getting cross species spot swapping. Um, and then they also introduced this metric that they call like LPSS, lower bound on the proportion of spot swap reads. And they say that like typically they measure this uh, around like 10 to 15%. Um, which is like the percentage of spots or percentage of um, reads that are um, due to like, or sorry, percentage of reads in one species that are supposed to be the other, essentially. Um, and the reason that they use the term lower bound is because um, this is only one type, type of spot swapping. So you could also have spot swapping within species. Um, so actually like, um, the problem is actually worse than they're able to measure with this metric. So that's why they call it a lower bound. Um, and then, okay, so once they introduce all of that, they're like, now we have the software tool that um, actually will improve this problem or at least partially address it. So again, they use one of the LABD pilot samples and they basically argue that like, it improves um, specificity of like, expression and known markers. So um, they took, in panel A, they took like um, GFA, like two markers, GFAP, um, which I believe is supposed to be, what is it? Uh, layer one in um, white matter, I believe. Um, and then SNAP25, which I believe is layers two through six of the DLPFC. Um, so they took, they show like the raw, um, the raw data and then what it looks like after they apply spot clean. And, um, basically like we get a much, like we get much less expression in, uh, each of the genes where they're not supposed to be expressed and then much more of it where they are supposed to be expressed. Um, so basically what they call it increased specificity. Um, panel B is actually, um, a different effect where they're basically saying like when we do differential expression um, of genes spatially, um, we can actually increase uh, increase effect sizes um, and decrease p-values. So 
Um, yeah, so they have like the log full change of the differential expression. Um, and after applying spot plane, basically like we get a bigger log full change, so bigger effect sizes of um, known markers of, um, I forget, I think it was white. I forget which section or which uh, layer it was, but they picked one of the layers and then measured the log full change. Um, and then, yeah, also in general, like we're getting increased significance of the results. Um, which I guess, I don't know, this figure I wasn't sure because I, I felt like this isn't actually directly evidence that, um, like, you could technically have, you could technically design a tool that increased what looked like effect size and decreased p values without actually doing anything biologically meaningful. But I think the arguments are pretty good here. <laughs> it's just like maybe a slight caveat, like this isn't direct evidence that it's doing the right thing. Um, but I think it's pretty convincing. Uh, um, actually, yeah, there's, I think those were like the main figures. 